understand less. Um, part of it I realized that as they can understand more, Google collects more data. Um, I also worked on TensorFlow, which is one of the open source projects uh, that Google put out, which is, I think, right now, probably top <laughs> biggest on GitHub by stars. Um, so it was pretty major contributor there. So I'll just kind of keep moving because we have a little time. But so near protocol is pretty much a smart contract blockchain. And the idea is to build an infrastructure where every developer can actually build an application, right? You don't need to be like a blockchain developer, you know, study for multiple months to actually write your first smart contract. And as you do that, right, as you like get closer to web developers who want to build applications, you kind of realize you also want users, right? So kind of near protocol is focused on experience. And scalability is just a part of it, right? Uh, if you want to get a lot of users, you will need to have scalable applications. Now, I'm not going to show too much our protocol, so if you want to learn more how that actually works, we have a ton of YouTube videos which explain exactly. Instead, today, because we're at Web3 and you know, there's a lot of talk about parachains and you know, separate app chains, I want to talk about how do actually application chains and dApps compare, right? Why would you run a application chain versus a dApp? So, who here are like, familiar with dApps? All right, give me more participation, come on guys. You're at a blockchain conference. All right. uh, so, so to compare with like application chain, right? This is something where you have a one specific chain run for this one specific application, right? Like I decided, hey, I have this mega idea, I'm gonna go and start my own blockchain, right? And usually there's like two ways you can do it. One is you can start a sovereign chain. So uh, usually Cosmos is like an SDK to do that. You spin up Cosmos SDK, you spin up a chain, boom, on your own. Great, you know, not saying moon, but options are there. <laughs> now, there's actually packed security, right? So this is where like Polkadot, what it offering is, is a shared security, where instead of you building up your own security of your system, you can rely on a shared security and kind of uh, don't need to spend as much time on that. So Plasma actually is very similar to this, where the shared security is Ethereum. So if you think of it, Plasma is up our chains to Ethereum. Nice. Now, when you're building your own chain, you actually need to figure out your own crypto economics, right? Because if you think of it, you actually need to get validated as a block producer to start participating in your blockchain. And I'll get more into this. Usually, you will not write the code from scratch, right? So you'll use Substrate, Cosmos SDK, a few others. And yes, you need this whole crypto economics stuff. Now, so let's start with actual security. And I'm not talking about crypto economic security. I'm talking about real, like, breaking stuff, you know, hacking, etc. right? When you're building a D app, right, it executes on a VM. What's E? Uh, EVASM for, or sorry, EVM for Ethereum. It's WebAssembly for any new blockchain near Ethereum 2.0, uh, et cetera, uh, Edgeware. And uh, what it actually gives you is actually gives you ability to write code that might not be that secure. Because if you're writing an app chain, you're actually write, writing native code. And if you messed up anywhere, this actually will explode all your nodes and can compromise the system or your validators. So this is pretty scary. Now, on top of this, because it's a VM, we actually have metering, right? We have gas, which measures how much usage has this application had and cuts it off as soon as it runs out, right? Again, when you're running an app chain, you don't have that. So you either need to add it manually, so you manually need to count how much usage it's been, or you can have transactions that may take like gigabytes of space and of RAM in your, on your nodes and again crash your validators. And if you have one of the consensus that actually slashes for uh, offline, this is the greatest way to get a bunch of people slashed in one go. Now, again, when you're launching your app chain, you're relying on the stack, right? You're relying on the substrate, on a Cosmos SDK. Now, Yes, there's great guys building it, and you know they are blockchain experts. They do know about security. They have security review, but you are taking the risk. So when you launch an app chain, you are actually taking the risk of running this blockchain and full stack from networking to crypto to consensus to your app code. All of this is owned by you. If there is an issue, if there is a bug, if there is security vulnerability, it's on you to fix it. It's on you to maintain it. Versus if you're running a DApp on Ethereum, on you know name a protocol obviously near, um, then the security risk that you have is just your app code, right? So if you need to do a security review, you do, your, you do yours for, app, for application code, you don't need to make sure that the stack is 
working, right? Because there is multiple people already relying on the same stack, and it's the same exact code runs in every node, right? So this is a difference. Because like when you're running, for example, Substrate or Cosmos, they're actually running a different version of what's uh, running on another chain, right? Binance running its own, you're running its own, like maybe there's a bug, maybe Binance fixed something and didn't tell you, and now knows how to hack into everything. We don't know. All right, so let's go to performance. That's where app chains actually win, right? Not, not everything is so, so dim. So app chains, like what main benefit is actually get performance of the full node, right? Like if I'm running my own application and I really believe that performance is a key of, of this application, right? You get the full performance, right? There's no other transactions happening. There's no kind of limitations to uh, what you do. MVM does have an overhead, right? So EVM is relatively slow. WebAssembly is faster, but still pretty slow. So like you do remove this boundary. The interesting thing is that you kind of need to optimize your own code, right? You need to make sure that you did not mess up, any, mess up anywhere. And with the dev, you actually can rely a little bit on uh, protocol kind of continuously improving and like adding, you know, maybe accelerating the um, maybe figuring out better tricks to uh, speed it up. But this is kind of like an uh, interesting thing. Now, specifically in sharded blockchains, which is uh, what NIR is, what Ethereum 2.0 is, and a few other blockchains, what's interesting now is that you don't actually, an application not sharing the chain with everybody, it only shares with other applications with their shard. Now, for Ethereum 2.0, it's hard to say right now because we don't actually know exactly what the design is for the, uh, like the, the phase one, as they call it. But for example, for Near, one of the things we're doing is what we call dynamic sharding. This is the idea that you actually reallocate applications to shards depending on usage. So if your application specifically needs a full shard of performance, right? You actually are crypto kitties who like knocking it out as part, you know, millions of users buying crypto kitties, mating them, you know, it's a crypto kitty, crypto kitty heaven you actually can get the full performance of a shard. Like we'll just move out every other application to other shards, dynamically. So that's kind of the idea that like sharded, sharded blockchains are actually very different from like a, a, a blockchain with a limited capacity like Ethereum and Bitcoin right now. Um, again, you can learn a lot more on that. I'm not gonna go too much into it. Now, economics is very interesting, right? So you're running your own blockchain, you're like, let's say, imagine we're at a hackathon, you know, you came in, you're like, okay, I'm gonna build a blockchain. Let's start with, you know, writing some code, spinning it up, and then you're like, well, I need my own app chain, so I need some blockchain app producers, right? So I need some folks who will actually care about my blockchain, produce blocks, you know, validate them, collect transactions, do all this good work. Now, I actually need to pay them sometimes, right? So I need my token. Now, I need my token, I need to actually build up liquidity for this token, right? Because this validators actually have expenses in dollars, so they actually need to go and sell this token separately. So you actually need to go like figure out an exchange. This is like not a hackathon project anymore. The part of it is if you pretty much paying them for running a full chain, right? Like you're actually paying them exactly how much a validator would spend plus some margin on running and running a full chain. So if you're not using the full chain, right, if your application actually uses only 10% of the throughput of the chain, you're actually overpaying. That's kind of, kind of that's how it is. So if you think of like dApps, the payment that's done is only pays for the amount that is in used, right? So here's kind of my, my analog for this is when you do an application chain, it's kind of like a dedicated hardware, right? It's expensive to buy, you set it up, you know, you configure it, you spend like a lot of DevOps time to figure it out, but you get a lot of performance improvements from it. Or you can just ship your app to cloud, get it to work, scale it up, you know, it's fast and easy, and you pay for how much you use, right? So there's like obviously trade-offs here, but uh, it definitely allows you to kind of quickly start with the apps. And one thing that you should not forget for the shared back security, you actually need to win an auction on, for example, a Polkadot, right? So there's only like limited number of slots for a power chain. So if you want to have a shared security, you actually need to get in on that, which can be pretty pretty high. Now, one thing that people really like with the separate chains, especially like a Cosmos separate chain, sovereign chain, is not like not depending on anybody's governance. So, which seems like a good idea, right? You don't want to depend on more stuff. 
Now, the problems here start with that, well, when you launch it, you actually need to have governance at work. Because if you don't have it working, then you will not be able to upgrade to something better. That's kind of an interesting idea. Versus when, when you deploy the app, right, you can start with like, hey, I'm gonna say what the app does. If you know, people don't like it this way, they can use it later when I actually make it more decentralized, right? So you can start like by upgrading the app yourself, then maybe switching to like a committee, and then maybe switching to a DAO, just like your token folders or whatever. So with uh, blockchain, you kind of need to like start with something that's pretty advanced already. You cannot just say like, hey, I'll have a key that will upgrade all the uh, nodes in the blockchain that produce uh, blocks, right? Because you actually have to have access to their machines directly. So they will not go for it. And uh, one, the, if you have this packed security, right, you actually depend on the governance of that chain. So if you have a plasma and you have Ethereum, right, Ethereum governance can kick you out and can modify your state. Same with Polkadot. Polkadot governance can kick you out from the chain. So there is like, yes, there is flexibility, but if you do want shared security, you do need to pay for it by losing governance. And then very interesting point is right now, there is like 100, a little bit plus of actual validators, professional validators on the market. So if you're talking about proof of stake, if you're launching a new chain, chances are all of your validators are validators of all the other chains. So if you think of it, hey, this is a validator of Cosmos that's validating my chain as well. And I'm trying to do something that, for example, hurts Cosmos. What is their decision making gonna be? If they are investing into Cosmos, right? Like they are like this is governance of like validators, right? Most of the time. And like token holders. So if you have already like all kinds of conflation because it's the same people, you actually don't have that much independence in the first place. That's just something to think about. Now the last part I wanted to mention is development speed. If you think of it, uh, the speed of deploying, right, like with the uh, dApps, if you're using some of the modern blockchains which have like online IDE and also tooling, the first app you can deploy in 15 seconds. And then you can quickly iterate, you know, upgrade the code, figure out what it works, deploy an MVP, get some user feedback, you know, launch an application, maybe build part by part. And then if it's a like app chain, Cosmos and Substrate are great. In one day you can actually launch your own blockchain, which is really cool. But it's still slow, and uh, you actually need to like learn Rust and Go or Go, figure out how it works. You know, actually know the points of integration. And launch is a big event because you need to align all the block producers, exchanges, wallets, integrations. You know, all the partnership to make sure your chain is actually successful. So it's just a very li different level of involvement that you need to do. So in general, like I, I want to kind of emphasize that app chains are very well suited for like infrastructure focused applications, right? So if you need to modify consensus, if you need to integrate some way to storage or something else, that's a great uh, like use case. DAX is also, because if you think of it, DAX is something that doesn't want to share the throughput with anybody else, right? As soon as somebody else in the mix of the transactions, they're actually starting to lose like uh, the like to front running to all kinds of things. Versus DAPs is where we actually want the applications to be, right? This is gaming, DeFi, like all kind of you know supply chain, healthcare, all kind of tracking things, and open web, which we believe like a way to decentralize internet again. Now, if you do disagree with me, please tell me because like I'm writing a blog post and I want some feedback on this. That's why this is pretty controversial. So, um, but yeah, this is pretty much my talk. If you want to learn more about Near, so we have our online ID where you can launch your DAP in 15 seconds. Uh, you can join our beta program, so we help you build that dApps, and you know there's some incentives for doing that. Ambassador program, and we have validator stake wars coming up. And also, just to kind of continue shilling, we have whiteboard series where we actually talked with almost like a lot of major uh, blockchain protocols, from Ethereum to Coino to Polkadot to Cosmos to uh, Plasma, etc. Where we actually have in very dApps how exactly they work, what are the models, etc. So it's really cool. Uh, our investors say we do the diligence for them. And, and we can do questions later. But yeah, follow me and tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs>